We all live in the digital world. We all need it to be open and safe. We all want to trust. And to be trusted. We all despise control. And desire freedom. We, we are all united. united. Hi everyone, welcome to this session on the future of the PE. Thanks everyone for joining us online and um, here in Katowice. Um, I'm sorry, I'm not sitting at the right table to actually be seeing everyone who's in the room, but um, just feel free to maybe raise your hand. And I have Michael here as my seasoned IGF assistant. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, yeah, so this session today is really just meant to be um, a bit of an informal session to meant for exchange and to get your feedback and kind of your um, experiences and your hopes for for next year as maybe most of you know we had a new um, IGF intersessional program that's been launched this year called the um, policy network on environment and digitalization where we've been developing a report on the environment and digitalization for the past few months and we've been really active and we're really proud to be showing you this report next um, today, uh, tomorrow, sorry, um, Thursday on 2 p.m. And we're hoping, of course, that many of you will join us in uh, when we present this report. And today now, um, I've just prepared something for you to interact with us to kind of tell us what you think we could be doing next year. So obviously, this year's focus was the, re was the report and Oh, um, I'm really happy to say that I think we've delivered on, on that first output document. And now we're really hoping to know or get your feedback on what you think could be the next steps. So basically what I've prepared is a mural. So maybe not all of you are familiar with this. It's um, an online co collaboration platform where you can access and kind of leave your thoughts and um, kind of it, it works with online post-its so I'm going to share this link in the zoom um, chat and also for the people in this room we're just going to do it collaboratively I think just gonna um, people can approach the microphone if they want to or just let us know and we'll just have a discussion I might switch places so I can actually see the people who are in the room um, let me just copy this link so the link is also linked on the um, p &E future session that you can find on IGF. So for the people in the Zoom chat, um, please <laughs> try to access the link and we'll see if it uh, works for you. For those who've maybe never used it, it's pretty simple to use. So you just go in there, you type in your name and then you should be able to access um, this Zoom, uh, this mural. Okay, so I can share my screen. <laughs> Apparently I don't have permission, but uh, it's fine. Maybe you just all go. Um, I guess that would have been the organizer's uh, task here in Katowice, but it's fine. Just all go on this mural and let me know in the, in the Zoom chat if it doesn't work out for you. Mm -hmm. ah, thanks. Okay, great. So as you can see on the screen now, um, there is this mural. So you can just zoom in and out of it. And there is different questions that I would like to go through with all of you who have been part of the p &E and who want to kind of give their feedback. And people in the Zoom room can obviously also unmute themselves. So the way we're going to do this is just collaboratively. So um, you either type in directly if you prefer to do that, or we just go through now. Um, through all of the questions and you kind of give me your feedback uh, verbally as well if you want to. So basically the first question we want to address is the question of how do we pursue with the report? So tomorrow we're gonna present a, an over 80 page report with, that contains a lot of information 
And the question really is, how do we assure that we have maximum dissemination of this report? So what's, what are your ideas to encourage interaction with the report where we talk about uh, environmental data, we talk about food and water systems, we talk about um, supply chain transparency. So a lot of issues that are also talked about within this IGF and we are hoping to encourage talk further next year. So this would be really be where you kind of tell us what your ideas are there. We also already have some ideas within the PE. We have think tanks that are kind of planning to maybe take a part of the report and continue there. So many things are possible. Hi everyone. While you're doing that, Florina, just just a casual reminder that as long as you feel comfortable sitting around the table, you're more than welcome to come here too. It's open to anyone. So thank you. Okay, so yeah, for so now I can actually see people in the room. So I don't know if um, we've only met within the PE online. So I'm not sure whether any of you have actually participated in the PE. So this might be really new to you. So feel free to ask any questions you might like. And um, for the actual content of the PE, we have the session on the policy network tomorrow. So that's where we're actually going to discuss um, the content of the report. But for now, does anyone from the Zoom want to express um, her or his thoughts on how to encourage interaction with the report? Sure. Yeah, that's just the part of the session planning. That, but it's a very true remark. But it, as you've seen, I Jeff, it's a very full session. So, of course, <laughs> feel free. I'm really sorry, but feel free to come tomorrow to attend our session. And this document will always be open for um, introducing re your remarks or your notes. You're welcome. Oh, sorry, could you just show us the interface? How? you know, to interact with the report. Uh, so, you know, if you want us to comment on it, so. Sure, actually, so <laughs> I'm sorry, it was maybe a misunderstanding. So it's not really about interacting with the report. So this session really was really meant for people who maybe have been part of the p &E or knew about the project and kind of want to give their opinion or thoughts on how to pursue next year. So the actual interaction with the report itself would be um, kind of tomorrow. But sorry, maybe I expressed it incorrectly. I meant this system you're showing right now. Oh, sorry. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's what I'm after, because obviously, uh, yes, well, I'm completely new to this. And uh, was sure, I, let, me, to, let me explain. You know, thank you. So uh, do you have a computer where you can access it? Uh -huh. OK, phone, that's also, <laughs> that's also fine. So basically, if you when you click on this link, like the mural, there are these post-its where you can scroll in and type um, what you want to give as a feedback. That's already, um, I think, the, the basic. And you can also produce your own, um, kind of generate your own post-its by copy and pasting or by just clicking up here, this little text icon, and there are the different sticky notes that you can use. But yeah, at first it can be a bit overwhelming, but it's actually really uh, simple to use. But I might just, um, I see that people are contributing in other areas. So let me just ask to, maybe we can go to kind of content wise for to kind of get the feedback on what issues we should focus on or could be focused on next year. So I see a lot of people in the chat who I've met through the p and &E, so especially for those who have been part of the p &E, like are there any issues or focus areas that you think we should prioritize and that should really make it into next year's efforts? Horst, I see that you've adjusted your microphone. Would you like to? Oh, um, 
to mention somewhat for for next year? My my exactly. proposal. Did you want to tell us what your thoughts were on for ah. what we could do next year? Yeah, I made a proposal on a issue that uh, I only came about uh, in the last week, so so I have no documents of myself uh, to share. But uh, there, as colleagues, even from public administration of nature preservation here in in Germany, uh, told me the issue of uh, pricing um, nature uh, to commercialize uh, 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 nature. Uh, and uh, also I raised my interest in, uh, because I was informed on an initiative that uh, they would uh, put uh, nature to the stock exchange. Um, that is just some words here, but um, those who, who uh, know a little bit about what is going on there, there, there is not only positive things probably, as we know from, from uh, big business and, and nature, uh, see, for for example, the Amazonas basin, not only in Brazil but also in the surrounding states that have a share in Amazonia, uh, Amazonian region, um, that um, could be critical. And I see that certainly there is uh, some issues on um, on governance needed in this initiative. Thank you. Thanks a lot. So I noted that. So we have the nature pricing issues and governance, maybe prioritize the topic of governance more. Um, I see other people are inputting in the um, in the mural. Elif, I noted, I'm sorry to put you on the spot, but you've joined recently the food and water work stream. And I'm wondering whether from your perspective, there is something you would like to add because you've been joining um, later, so you might not have had the chance to input as much as um, possible. Yes, thank you very much for giving the floor, Marina. I think uh, since I joined in definitely it was uh, taking up a lot of space in our discussions, how the digitalization will be seen as an opportunity, but also how there will be risks associated with that. And I think that comes up in every governance discussion. So I imagine that also in 2022, maybe we will be looking at newer technologies. So I put one suggestion with how the predictive algorithms are actually beneficial, but there are also downsides of using predictive algorithms. So I think we will be looking at then new technologies, new challenges that are brought by digitalization. And I think we will be again, uh, keeping this governance angle when we are analyzing what would be, of course, these uh, opportunities there that we want to capitalize on, but what would be also the risks that we will have to uh, at least implement in uh, policy planning. Thank you so much. With the can I just as a follow up question? So, with the governance, is there a specific angle of governance that you would want to cover, or because it's quite the broad? Yes, I think in, in this case, because we will be just like setting the agenda, I would not know what would be the best idea, because of course, for some contexts, and uh, for example, for the Netherlands, the regional governance itself is also quite important, but I know that internationally, it's not really applicable to every setup. So in that sense, I think maybe that could be actually a discussion that we want to go through, whether we want to keep a broad governance angle and highlight all issues at a local, regional, and uh, national or international levels or whether we want to maybe be a bit more limited in our scope next year so that we can go more into the details of these specific issues with governance. Thank you. Are there any reactions to um, what Elif just said on, on the topic of governance? So whether we should limit or, or keep a broad scope? I mean, we can do both as well. It probably depends on, on the question addresses also, but I guess there's always something to be said for limiting the scope. <laughs> we have a Michael also here who also always advocates for that. So I don't know if you wanted to add to that. Hi, everyone. Yes, I actually do want to add something about that. Florina, my name is Michael Ogia. Um, and I would... I mean, I think that at the moment, the PE document as it is, it's it is quite broad, 
And I think for the sake of, um, let's say, um, kind of establishing a foundation for which we can work going forward, I think that being broad is good in this sense because we've kind of put everything or as many, many things, not everything, we've put many things on into the document to say, okay, well, if somebody's interested in track A, you can take go in that direction. If you're interested in something else, you can go in that direction. But I do think that it, it, it would be very beneficial for us to, in the going forward in the future, to have a more specific focus, on, in, in, uh, especially in areas that are not necessarily being covered either by other organizations or initiatives at the moment, or two, can take what's been done and then say, okay, well, how can we apply this then using the unique nature of the IGF and the stakeholders that we bring together so that we really avoid duplication? Because something to stress is that on the local, regional, and international level, there is so much happening now on ICT sustainability. It's fantastic. However, that also means that it's, uh, that it's very easy then to kind of to, to do something that's either being done already or that has already been done full stop. So that for me is a big reason why I always say it's important to have a rather limited scope, not because it's not important, it's just so that we make sure that we're capitalizing on our strengths while still you producing something that adds value. Thank you, Michael. Any other comments? I've seen it. Um... Others have joined us in the meantime on Zoom, so feel free to share your thoughts as well. Maybe if I can um, come in for one second while waiting for other colleagues to maybe either raise their hands or join in. Uh, I was also thinking maybe one thing that we can add there is um, building up on these comments that we don't want to uh, have duplication. Maybe we can stay a, a bit more in touch with the other dynamic coalitions or other policy networks in the IGF community as well. So maybe that could be for our planning for 2022, perhaps right after uh, all the reports are uh, out or the findings are out, maybe that's one idea that we can maybe have a common meeting or uh, meetings for the PNE network between different dynamic coalitions so that we make sure that we build on each other's work, like you say, and we are not duplicating the work. That's a really good point. I think we can also add this to, there's another box I've prepared on important reference documents or initiatives. So I think we, this is also the idea that we kind of keep track of who we want to link with next year or who are important stakeholders. So I'm just gonna put IGF stakeholders there as well. Okay, so let's maybe, um, or, sure. Uh, hi everyone, my name is David. I have also been involved in the in the P&E discussions. And I think um, what Michael said resonated with me. Um, I think there, there, I think that we need to take some time probably in the P&E to do some, to do some check. Okay, what are we actually strong in? Hopefully also we have, we will have gotten some feedback for our initial report by then um i also i mean it would also nice to be to have more clarity about the pne uh in terms of what it's supposed to achieve in terms of because at the moment we are like a lot of people who work in the environmental and tech uh like some high overlapping areas and we have produced um a, a report that is for policymakers, but for a very general set of policymakers. So, are we supposed to use our expertise in environmental aspects um, in order to feed that into the PNE? Um, uh, sorry, into the IGF community more. And then it needs to be probably a bit more targeted towards like what is the IGF? I think many of us in the PNE we don't have the in-depth knowledge of the. Uh, of the IGF and how uh, of the in and outs of IGF. So I work uh, quite a bit also with ITU. So it's very clear that there are standards, blah, 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 blah. So what is what what does the IGF, uh, how can we contribute to the IGF better? Um, or is it something that the IGF wants to use in order to reach out 
to other communities. So is it is it like more out, outwards looking in terms of taking what's been done in the IGF and trying to bring that message to other uh, policymakers out there in other fields? Uh, is it supposed to promote coherence? So um, I, I think there's a lot of there's a lot of sweet spots that we need to find. Um, in the second case, if it's from the IGF, also outward looking and trying to bring that power of the IGF um, to other communities, then I think we need to have more IGF people in the uh, in in the in the PNE. So I think there's there's a lot of things to consider, and we can go both ways. Either see what we have in the IGF. It's a great community. I love working with it, um, and it it has been very successful in a way. I mean, everybody knows that when you just drop in some people who are supposed to write a report, then everything can come out at the end, right? So it's uh, people dropping the ball. Like this has been very good work in the terms that we have, I think, have a very respect respectable report at the end. But so how can we improve that? How can we scope it? How can we make it more clearer and more targeted? Um, I think there is a lot of potential here um, and uh, it, will, it would be nice to get to, to have that harnessed even more. Thank you. Thank you so much, David. Yeah, I, I'm asking myself the same question. I think it's something we or the IGF secretary also wants to discuss because for full like transparency, I haven't really, or I think that the IGF is planning to have these discussions basically over uh, 21, 22, like going into 22. And this is really meant to be, all of these things we're discussing now is meant to be feeding into their discussions as well. And um, I'm sure they they also have uh, ideas on, on how to, to proceed, but I agree that that's one of the most important questions to clarify. I, I would like to speak again, but before I do, is there anybody online that would like to come in and, you know, before, just, just to make sure that we're being fully hybrid? If not, then I will continue and I'll just, running the risk of, of sounding self-congratulatory or something like that, I wanna just say thank you, David, for that. And I, I fully agree with you. And as I put into the chat, I think uh, given, especially what you said, it made me realize, it made me think that if, if we don't clarify the audience going forward, I think that is a good way for us to figure out, well, then how, what, what exactly do we want to do? Where do we wanna take this? Having said all of that as well, I. I don't, I, I want to be clear that there is so much opportunity in this space that is, that is not necessarily being addressed. Um, and I just, I don't want us to run the risk of becoming, uh, of seeming like, we, you know, there's not a specific direction to take or that it's actually not as important of a topic as we thought, because we just don't really actually know which part of it, on the contrary, there's so much that if we try to do everything, I think it, it would, that is kind of how we'll, we'll um, find a bit of, uh, of confusion or, or in terms of our, uh, the identity of PE, so to speak. Um, but having, uh, but, but with that said, I just want to um, also say that, um, that I do very much support what is, and, and, for the sake of, uh, for the record, it's not just because of the main session tomorrow, which I'm part of, but I do think that the environmental data um, component is a very good bridge between the Internet Governance Forum as, a, as an internet um, body, as an internet discussion platform, and the environment itself, because that's some, I don't honestly know who else is really, who, where the, the environmental um, data governance discussions are happening. I do think that the IGF is a good home for them um, because yeah, so, so that's, that's kind of where I think is a good place for us to, to consider exploring as well. Thanks a lot, Michael. I see that Florian has also raised his hand on Zoom. Florian, please. So I want to offer a bit of a contrasting view or a different angle on the role of the PNE, possibly also going forward. So if we think about uh, what is done on the environmental front, also internationally down to the local level, these are like regime complexes with various many scattered actors that uh, work 
uh, in the environmental and climate policy field, uh, uh, like as a complex system, so to say. And then we have uh, on the other side all the expertise from uh, the technological experts and internet experts. And so I can imagine the role for the PNE slash IGF also as a broker uh, uh, facilitating communication and uh, establishing uh, bridges and communicative links between the technical and computer science experts and this whole complex environmental implementation uh, systems and regime complex so that uh, this would go a bit against uh, focusing further but imagining also this other role of being, being, uh, being, uh, bringing these two types of uh, expertise circles together. And then, and I like this uh, idea maybe also because we want uh, all the expertise that computer scientists have to more quickly be implementable by the environmental policy makers and uh, policy implementers. So then it, uh, we can think of the PNE as uh, the one of the hubs that is uh, establishing the links and whenever uh, an environmental organization needs expertise on the technical front on a specific issue we can uh, know where to resource that expertise from the computer science and technical field and uh, uh, enable this feed then of expertise so that is already implementable so this would also uh, address the idea of uh, how to make an impact, maybe as well. So that was just a small uh, remark on, on that. Thanks. Thank you so much. Um, Michael, did you want to respond to that? Or because, yeah, I, I just think, I mean, thank you very much. I think maybe both are possible in a way as well, but it probably depends on who will take up what role within the network. But I think it's a very good idea also to say that let's be mindful of not focusing too much because that could exclude maybe also people who are necessarily only in, interested in environmental data, for example, because now I agree that it's a really good, great chance to be focusing on that um, because it maybe attracts also the attention of policymakers and data as such big data is becoming a bigger topic um every year or so but but still i think it's a good idea to to keep the pe in like keep that network um mindset in a way also to not um be exclusion excluding of of specific, of other topics So um, another thing I wanted to kind of get your feedback on or just be, be sure that we've collected what you would like to offer is something that uh, Horst has already been taking up in the chat. So Horst has, I think, offered, uh, for example, to, to lead workshops. And I think this is exactly what I also would like to know from you and from other members of the PE. Like, do you have any ideas of specific output that you would like to implement within the context of the PE? So there is maybe a chance for us to collaborate and coordinate a bit um, what we could do under the umbrella of the PE, for example. So maybe Horst, could you just um, also repeat what you said on, on the workshop and so that we can take that up here? Uh, thank you, Florina. Um, I referred to the possibility of the World Summit on Information Society. That is a uh, annual big, very big conference uh, like like um, uh, IGF, but devoted to the topics, especially to information society, where, of course, I say, all what we do in IGF is also related to information society. This is why I see the synergy of these uh, two big United Nations initiatives, and in um, um, uh, alike uh, like the the uh, IGF in uh, with this, uh, there is a possibility. Ah, I forgot to send the link. I, I should should post the link to the twenty twenty two uh, with this uh, conference. It's open for submission already. The, um, and 
So the question there is, uh, what can we do in the terms of governance? As you see in my latest uh, chat remark also, I see if we say we have the aspects of governance, that is why the problems of that complexity reduces to our competencies in this domain in IGF. And these can be taken into, for instance, just a proposal into a World Summit on Information Society, uh, because governance is, should be, and maybe the awareness had to be sharpened to information society, that it's not just the experts, it's in the interest of information society that that governance really is critical about what happens and what should be the future of environment um, at all. So this is just one possibility. The other possibility were, uh, is uh, that uh, uh, the certain institutions say, oh, we make a local conference, uh, a science conference or, or something like that. Um, well, this uh, is beyond my personal uh, uh, possibilities at the moment. I did so years ago, but um, um, I, I think uh, joining such big events uh, is also one of the possibilities uh, in, to, to, to meet then in Geneva uh, in March, end of March, uh, hopefully in WISIS, of course. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Horst. So I see there's another um, idea of um, having a collection of case studies. I think that's also something we were planning a bit to include in the report, but obviously haven't managed to also do consistently. So I think that would be a good, a nice idea to maybe focus more on case studies, like applied examples. Are there others who want to contribute or let us know about their ideas for possible outputs? How do we submit case studies? Um, I mean, that would be up to the format that we choose, right? We could choose to, again, start a collaborative document the same way we did for the p &E report where we maybe split into subgroups or um, focus on a specific topic where then we kind of decide on what's the format of the case studies that we want to include and start a collection. Yes, Michael. Hi, everyone. This is Michael again. So uh, there's, first of all, to answer the question about case studies, it could be a collaborative document, or it could also be a, um, a collection, kind of just basically collating existing resources and uh, in, in kind of using those as a model. I mean, for instance, a good example of this is with Association for Progressive Communication. They just put together an, an incredible e-waste, um, um, uh, an entire e-waste guide. And there's or not just, not guide, that's probably the wrong word, but um, basically just an entire resource where they look at different elements of e-waste, of electronic waste, and uh, circularity, it's the circularity guide, excuse me, um, that they've put together. And so for instance, you, where, which is also a collection of case studies. So, so again, there's no need to necessarily um, to you know, recycle what's already been done. It, it could also just be a good way to, to help people connect to all the resources that are out there. The other thing I wanted to say, and kind of on the same note, and I think Florian was, was mentioning uh, this, uh, it's kind of, I think that we could really take advantage of the network part of p and &E a little bit more and just create almost like a, uh, the, the, the Youth Coalition on Internet Governance had this for a while. I don't know if they still do, but it was almost like a repository of, of people. Um, and I, I know the IGF has this, I think, already of, of basically of subject matter experts, like who is an expert at cybersecurity or privacy? Well, I think maybe p and &E could potentially do this for organizations and um, and people, whether those involved or elsewhere. So let's say somebody wanted to, a policymaker wanted to know, okay, I'm, uh, I'm in a ministry in X country. I would love to know who are the people in the organizations working on e-waste in my country so that I can connect with them, invite them to a consultation, et cetera. That could be potentially relevant. But I think another uh, way to guide that would be to actually talk to policymakers themselves and say, what information do you need? 
that way that we can actually then fulfill that information over the coming years, as opposed to just kind of guessing, well, they might need this, maybe we can offer them that, et cetera. Thank you so much, uh, Michael. And I see that uh, during your intervention, there is Desiree and then Elif and then Horst. Hi, Desiree, welcome. You're still on mute. No, I, um, can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, good. Um, well, I'd, I'd like to support what, um, yeah, Michael has just said. I think we um, probably uh, have to um, somehow address, um, to, to, to have a network or um, that would be a list of experts as well that are either on the IGF website or within the PNE. And um, and that um, people would know how to network and um, how to reach out to them. Uh, the uh, particular APC study that was uh, circulated here, I think um, it would serve as an inspiration, at least uh, to me, I, I run a citizens uh, science network in Southeast Europe uh, about air quality monitoring um, within the Internet Society of Serbia. Uh, so we are analyzing a lot of data and uh, it would be useful for us as well to share our case studies and to not just showcase it uh, regionally, but to make this um, uh, connection as well. One thing I'm finding a little bit of trouble um, filling in all the text box, uh, boxes here on the Muriel, which is a lot of fun, by the way is uh, one topic that I think we could address would be the, um, you know, for the digitization to happen, um, to have some set of policies, how do digitization supports the, uh, the reach of sustainability and what is a digital sufficiency as well. I think these are all the useful terms um, our network um, could think about uh, in terms of um, digital sufficiency, whether it's technical, whether it's data, whether it's users and some uh, guidance uh, principles. Thanks. Thank you so much, Desiree. Nice to meet you. Likewise. Uh, uh, I think next was um, Elif and then Horst and then Florian. Thank you very much. I think we are uh, now already building maybe uh, a bit more input on how we can move forward. And I was also thinking then from what I hear from the colleagues, maybe one of the ideas also would be to try to collect these best practices maybe. So we could also call it this uh, use case collection or best practice collection. And maybe that would be a way for us to reach out to the network. And it also, of course, uh, increases the network as well, because probably we would be doing it through maybe like a uh, call for expression of interest or so on to collect these best practices on maybe either the use of technology for the environment, or we would be then coming together and also looking at whether we want to do it on that or whether we want to look at the governance of technology for the environment. So I think that would be a discussion on maybe on which domain we would want to do that. But if I'm um, hearing these uh, ideas, I was then also thinking maybe that is one way that we would be contributing also in 2022 with this uh, policy network where we would be able to collect best practices, then also reflect on them, then also create maybe a collection of these use cases or best practices to be used also by policymakers. And then probably eventually also looking at the strategies and the working methods of the PNE, probably also with the experts that we have on board and we will be taking on board, maybe we could be then analyzing these best practices to lead to policy advice, to lead to maybe further uh, common uh, expertise or common application grounds for us as well. Thanks very much. I tr I'm trying to illustrate what you're uh, saying. So please contribute to if you don't feel like this um, illustrates it well. So um, I think next was Florian or no, Horst, sorry. Yeah, thank you. Uh, with all the discussion, I I like to, to mention a, a little bit to, to put a little bit more uh, carefulness uh, into into the, the, the broadness of aspects. Are we really going to repeat 
existing networks of experts. Um, as we know, they are in biodiversity and SDGs in every every single SDG in, in, in whatsoever. Um, should we repeat this or is our, because it's not just policy, it's a policy network in the Internet Governance Forum. That governance is first for me. This is why I'm here. I'm also networked in, in a lot of other things, but uh, governance is the thing that comes here. And if we try to collect best practices all around all whatsoever topics or, or something, the question would be first tell why the whole thing is important for governance and not just collect because not to repeat existing um, 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 expert groups. Please, um, I, I, that is just an advice. Everyone knows that it's nice to to, to network, but uh, the focus here should really be governance aspects first. Yes, if I can just come in for one second, then Horst, I also edited Florina the uh, sticky note there. So then we can say that it could be a best practices that we would collect on the governance of how the environment and technology is interacting. Then maybe that could be that uh, unique angle, like you say, without duplicating any other efforts, creating this own niche area for this policy network. Thank you. Thanks for, for editing. Uh, Florian. Just a small remark. Uh, so uh, if you think about uh, this like repository or website with uh, use case examples and uh, possibly um, focusing on the governance of the different uh, application areas, like uh, that can be great. But um, in terms of outreach and possible other outputs. So I don't know if that is too old school and what do you think, but if like a half annual newsletter type of collection of use cases that is curated to have only a smaller number of highlights that uh, people have time to uh, go over and find interesting and then if they wish, then go to another bigger repository to look further. So, uh, and then, uh, and then we can also think if this newsletter uh, in each edition, like every half year or every year, I don't know, which is then uh, of course more accessible for uh, than the full report uh, for any interested uh, party and. And then if, uh, for, uh, for example, if each edition should uh, include uh, these curated cases on a broad range of issues, or we highlight one uh, application domain of governance uh, of uh, environment via technology, or, uh, in every edition only one domain to make it more focused, and then every uh, uh, round to uh, attract the interest into that, but that's something that I, I don't know, I don't have an opinion yet, if it's better to make it like diverse or uh, domain focused each, uh, each edition. Thanks. Thank you, Florian, for this input. Michael, you're next. Thank you, Florian. So, first of all, I just want to clarify to, especially to Horst, that I don't, I don't want to seem like I'm contradicting what you're saying, because I do think that you make a very, very in, important point about in, making sure that we do recognize the value in addressing governance. With that said, I really want to support especially what Elif said, because I've been thinking about what you said, Elif, for uh, some time, and I've I thought to myself whenever P&E was first announced that, for instance, if I'm a policymaker and I want to know how to make our ICT or telecoms or utilities more sustainable, what do we need to do? We as in the government or, you know, a, actually a multi-stakeholder group of actors. Because there is no single source that has a full list, let's say, of policy recommendations for governments, regulators, um, obviously legislators and policymakers, et cetera. Um, so perhaps this gap is something that this group 
uh, would like to consider, and that is compiling policy and regulatory recommendations, best practices, and actions from around the world for the that kind of address the intersection between telecoms, uh, ICTs, and sustain and sustainability in the environment. Uh, and those could be, for instance, examples of integrated environmental sustainability and environmental um, sustainability strategies or actions in a country's telecommunications uh, national policy plan um, that could help address these things. That would be a bit of a different, perhaps a, you know, a separate direction. But again, if that's something that policymakers would find useful, if that's something that the PE would be willing to explore, I just think that that could be a potentially interesting way to build on some of the work that we've done so far. Thank you, Michael. And I think that's a, a point. I mean, you made this point very early on in the PE process where we've already kind of um, discussed we were going to focus on a report first. But I, I also really like this idea from the start. And I think it's a might be a different kind of resource that we that could really be a valuable add on to the, the report as well and really having more concrete examples from around the world, which I think would inspire policymakers and we could still kind of make sure that it focuses on governance too that we kind of don't lose sight of that aspect but since it would be a resource specifically targeted for policy makers i think that would almost come naturally um if we if we set it up right i think um so i'm seeing we have about five and a half minutes left so i just want to make sure that everyone has been able to get across or that we were able to discuss the most important points so as with this mural so that just stays open until at least the beginning of next year. So feel free to always input uh, whatever thoughts you have, if possible, kind of in the right box, but I will be going through this regularly to see um, how we can also kind of make this a bit um, easy to, to digest. And there will be a synthesis of this um, for the IGF secretariat. Um, so I'm just thinking what to do with the minutes we have left. So just seeing whether someone of you wants to add something um, as of now, I see no raised hands. There is a box for various or so other thoughts on PE that you might have. So feel free to um, put anything there where you don't, we're not sure where to, uh, where to put it. Also, for those who are new here who have never uh, seen in the PE, make sure to sign up to the PE um, mailing list, which we already have, um, to make sure that you're. Um, kind of you get every update for next year as well. And yeah, I think maybe as a last kind of note, I think this is a really or could be a very valuable box for us to have as well, because since we have quite a large network by now, all of you have your individual networks too. So I think that would be really helpful if you could just drop a note here for any important reference document or initiative that you might know of. Maybe some are even just starting next year and you're maybe also part of that. So I think as Michael and others have stressed, it's really important for us to try to not duplicate efforts. And as this topic has been getting more and more traction, I think that's becoming a bigger challenge um, every year. So I think that would be really helpful for us to, and for, for the whole community, if you could just, we could try to document and what else is going on outside of our bubble and how we might integrate uh, those initiatives into our own um, considerations. Is there anyone else um, also maybe uh, who, who wants to contribute something? It can be something outside of, of the box, so to speak, as well. Yes, Elif, I saw that you have raised your hand or was it a... <laughs> accident. Well, th thank you very much. I just wanted to also say thank you very much, Florina, for organizing this session in this very creative way. I think it was really very pleasant. And even if we couldn't be there, it did feel like we could give our sticky note contributions as well. So I just wanted to thank you for uh, making this very innovative way of organizing this meeting. Thanks a lot, Del. If it was a bit of a struggle in the beginning to have this hybrid, I think it would have been almost more easy to just have it fully on Zoom. <laughs> but thanks a lot for participating, everyone. Yes, Horst. Um, I just typed in the chat. Um, if uh, I wonder if we can work with indigenous peoples, um, um, the United Nations, um, and uh, and I'm not aware if in EGF 
there are subgroups of uh, dealing with the um, uh, governance uh, needed and felt by um, indigenous peoples. Uh, it's a, quite an important thing in connection to environment because um, threats to indigenous peoples typically are um, directly uh, combined with threats in uh, environment, as we know, all over the world. And um, uh, that kind of topic uh, would be a little bit unique. I'm not the absolute expert there, but I feel from discussions with my colleagues that uh, these issues uh, could be something uh, worthwhile doing. I don't know if we find a solution at the moment. Thanks for this input. Okay, so I think we can wrap it up because I see no more raised hands. Um, please remember that we have the PE session tomorrow. So we're hoping to welcome all of you there at 1.50. And um, you can still sign up through the website. And um, this document, as I said, is open for anyone to contribute as long as you want to. Thanks everyone for um, participating and I wish you a very nice afternoon. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you.